Mirabel and I thought it would be fun. Well, we've been doing some Brazilian Jiu Jitsu lately. Mm -hmm. And not exactly Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. This is what we taught back up at Rewild U to the Forest Monks. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, maybe a self defense version of BJJ or BJJ along with some other, other elements. And uh, what do you like about this? It's just so fun. It's I don't fun. know. Every bit of it. It's fun. <laughs> and as we were practicing yesterday, we were thinking, boy, it would be really fun to share it with you. So if you have children, this is a, a great age to start kids learning these skills. And if you don't have children and you're an adult, even though this is kind of geared, the way I'm going to be explaining things, it's going to be geared towards uh, an, an adult working with a child. It is just as viable if you're practicing with another adult. We're going to be going over a lot of movement theory that even if you're not interested in martial arts will be helpful in understanding how the human body moves through mm -hmm. space and how you achieve greater balance and agility. <laughs> <laughs> and as Mirabel said, it's fun. So really fun. I, I, and it's a good exercise. Yeah. Really good exercise. It really is, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Gets your heart and lungs going. And I don't think there's any better strength workout in that oh, yeah. you have to be utilizing your muscles in all these different directions. Mm -hmm. And your muscles have to work with your mind too. Like you have to think something and then act it fast. I think it's also like a living chess game in a way, and that there's a lot of strategy involved. And it teaches you to be calm under pressure. There's so many benefits to this, along <laughs> with being super fun. So if you're oh, looking yeah. to try to choose an, an exercise paradigm in your life, this could be it. One thing to remember about this, especially in the context of choosing a martial art, is that everything can be weighed against, well, this, will this work in real life? And when we're thinking about working with a child, or even when we're starting out martial arts as an adult, we're not going to be getting into the ring tomorrow, nor hopefully are we going to be asked to use our skills in a self-defense situation tomorrow. Who knows what the world brings, but we're thinking years out to having an effective self-defense repertoire under our belt. So really think of this more as exercise and fun and fun. Yeah. Put together in a way to get in better shape, to increase your mental awareness, your body awareness, your proprioception. Mm -hmm. Wow. And as we do each of these videos, and, and I kind of envision, who knows what will happen, us doing these videos up until you're 15, 16. That'd be fun. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and at that point, she's going to have a lot more strength on her body to be able to exert on an opponent. Right now, when we're wrestling, I have a lot more strength than you. but. <laughs> As you grow stronger and older, that will change. So remembering, especially with younger people, if you're working with someone that doesn't have the same amount of strength, we're going to be focusing largely on technique and ways to, well, you know, BJJ became famous in the MMA circles because oftentimes a smaller opponent could overcome a larger opponent if that smaller opponent was trained in BJJ and the other one wasn't. So there is this, um, this ability. I mean, BJJ pulls in these elements that we saw in older arts like Aikido and Judo and puts them into a new context that is very viable for actual self-defense situations 
and in the ring. Obviously, it's proven itself very well in the ring. So again, just have fun with this. Then the next three videos that we do are going to talk about different elements of movement theory. And these are elements of movement theory which have to do with all of our movement through space, but are primarily focused on this ground fighting, this grappling. So we're going to be talking about our base. We're going to be talking about posture. Posture. And... Oh, that's <laughs> 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 and we're going to be talking about uh, what we call limb awareness. And we're not going to focus on all three of those. In this video, we're just going to be talking about base. So base is how is where my body is okay i'm sitting on the ground okay. right I'm so sitting on the ground. you're sitting on the ground and because you have a base you can push me out right right <laughs> <laughs> now if you did not have a base let's say you were floating in the air when you pushed me we know from physics we would both go you would go way. that way i have a base i wouldn't move yeah. and you just would go away so as we learn to develop a base, obviously we're probably not going to be floating, uh, fighting, levitating people. <laughs> Unless they're yoga masters and master Jedi ninjas. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But since we're not fighting any of them right now, we aren't going to be <laughs> having these floating people. But our base... Does matter. Yeah, it does matter. And how that's structured is we're going to understand why it's so easy for her to push me over right now as we show you what what base is, how you can develop a stronger one, and then we're going to give you a practice that you can do, a really fun practice that allows you to change a person's base, to alter it so that you can set up later down the road, as we learn a lot more, you can set up in order to unbalance somebody, get them onto the ground, or if you're on the ground, to maneuver into a submission. Mm -hmm. But for right now, we're just learning about how to disrupt a person's base and understand where the base is strong and where it's weak. One more thing that we want to bring up, and feel free to do the obvious thing anytime here. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come to you, is that if you are, if kids are growing up in a martial arts family, and if you're starting to do this, then you're a martial arts family. If they're growing up in a martial arts family, there is something that shouldn't really be present in, in regular non-martial arts families. And that is the husband hitting the wife, the wife hitting the husband, the child hitting the pet father, the, <laughs> the father hitting the child. When we're doing striking arts, there's going to be a lot of that hitting. In the grappling, we're still going to be utilizing strikes there. So when you're growing up in a martial arts family, we have a rule, I guess you would call it, or a guideline, or a, a thing that we live by, which is we say that it's okay to hit other people when, and this is the qualifier, when we have we ask, yeah, mm -hmm. we have their permission. So Mirabelle, for instance, is anytime she wants, is hitting me in the stomach as hard as she wants. And this is during our all day long. And it helps me to be more aware of my abs. Mm -hmm. And it helps me to be more aware of my, aware, my surroundings because she can hit me at any time. But I gave her permission to do that. Mm -hmm. We're not just going to smack each other yeah, totally. and that teaches us not to be using hits or strikes in anger or mm -hmm. frustration we only strike each other when we have permission and it's in a training context mm -hmm. so that is a wonderful rule if you will to have in your family yeah. hitting striking yeah. is okay if permission is there and it's done under a training context all right, let's go. So the very first practice is just wrestling and pushing each other. <laughs> and the, the beautiful thing about this is that we're going to start to develop some strength. And we're going to develop strength 
a lot of frontal strength and a lot of pulling oh. pulling oh, strength. Pulling strength. Really? So that's our that's our back. Yeah. Now, the way that we don't want to be in BJJ eventually is when she's pushing against me, I'm pushing against her. This is called force on force. And this is the least effective way in grappling or in regular life, whether with mental emotional context or whatever it's going to be, of dealing with just about anything. So when we are pushing against force, there is a lot of muscular effort and the person that is stronger will win. But also if I'm stronger and that other person is trained in redirecting energy or absorbing energy, then I'm in a really bad place. But for right now, that's actually what we want to do. And the reason why is that really right now we're trying to get exercise and develop strength. So right now we actually want to be pushing. <laughs> sorry, director. We want to be pushing against each other. And yeah, I'm using your like. <laughs> and you can do this with a child in a way that honors their strength level. So when they get a good base, like she did with her feet there, and push up, she might not actually have been able to push my entire weight. But I'm going to let her exert some force and then move as if she was stronger. And so that is going to really allow her to start developing more muscular strength. So the wrestling is just <laughs> is just for fun. And if you need to have some kind of a, a contest, if that helps you guys, and you can think who can be on top. And that's a really, that's a fun way to do it. And here I'm just going to put my weight on her and see if she can, somehow get on top of me. What are you gonna do? <laughs> okay, so that's wrestling. And just have fun with it. Yeah. Now, as we are wrestling, developing that strength in all of our limbs, we're gonna start to practice being aware of our base. And the best way to understand this base is for us to get up on our feet and we'll show you with some lines. My base, remember, is what is, is the foundation from which my body can exert power. So right now, our base is the ground that we're standing on. Our base, later on, we can start to understand, could even be, you know, if she's on top of me, my, my body could be her base. And when we're down on the ground, then we're gonna have a lot more of our body connected with the ground. And so our base is gonna shift a lot, but the really the easiest way to understand it is right here. And there are, there's something called balance lines. And what a balance line is, if we face off here, and we're gonna just push on each other. So we have some balance lines. So put your foot, feet down there. Yep, okay. So. I'm going to draw those balance lines. You can see those there on the ground. And the thing about balance lines is that if she pushes me, so come out of yours once, and, well, you just be getting yours. Okay, so if I push into her balance line, she's strong. If I pull into the direction of her balance line, she's strong. Now, if I push perpendicular to her balance line, then she's gonna fall over. Yeah, very, very easily. And so, same thing on me. She can push there, she's coming into it. Oh, there I'm really, really weak. Now when we visualize these, we can start to, when we're standing up, practice getting ourselves off of those balance lines. And noticing that when she gets me off of my balance line, go ahead. I'm automatically going to readjust it and I have a new one. Now down the road, we're going to learn to use that as a setup to unbalance somebody, to take them onto the ground. Again, if we're on the ground, to turn that into a submission, to create openings. But right now, all we're concentrating on is recognizing in our mind where those balance lines are and practicing moving ourselves against them. So all we're going to do is we're going to push each other around here. 
But instead of just pushing, we're trying to be aware. Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah, where those balance lines are. Oh. And we're trying to get each other to readjust our feet as we go. Oh. Yeah, as soon as she readjusts, that's fine. She can pick up and readjust however you want. Yeah. And then, good. And then she made me readjust. And we're just playing like this and noticing how I have to continually readjust it. So when I'm coming up to her, I'm not just going to push her randomly or with a lot of strength. I'm going to look what's going on with that line and then <laughs> use that line going perpendicular to it. This is a great time to start training in a really important element of all martial arts and I'd say all of life too, <laughs> especially wood skills, and that's to be in your peripheral vision. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to look at her feet the whole time, but I want to be looking at her center of her chest or at her eyes, and as I do that, using my peripheral vision to see there. So all we're going to do for this game is we're going to try to unbalance each other. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as you can see, it's fun. And we're learning as we play this. <laughs> we're learning to notice where <laughs> where those lines are and then to manipulate them. That's all it has to be. You don't have to lead it into anything at this point. Now we can play the same game on the ground. So we're going to get down on the ground and show you how to recognize this when you are wrestling. So, same thing here. Let's go ahead. And we might get to a place where we're kind of frozen up. And this will happen with kids and people, new people that are starting a lot. And then you can stop and I can say, can you see where my balance lines are? I'm going to try to draw them. And we can see they're more complex than they were when we were standing. But can you see where you can break me per perpendicular to one of these where I won't have any yes. strength? This way? Yeah, that yeah, way. That's what I was thinking. Good. Nice. So there she saw where, <laughs> where my balance line was, where I was weak, and she moved me off of it. So she, she's using my body as a base now, but I can feel where she has a balance line. She's spreading out her legs to create a better base, but I still oh, can find a place where her balance line is weak. Okay. And this can be kind of slow motion wrestling in a way. Uh, yeah, so again, can you feel where I'm where I'm weak here? Oh that I'm in that same position. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So that is how okay, where are you weak now? Uh, the backwards. Yeah. <laughs> so she's already aware of where she's weak. And as we start to play this game on the ground, we start to feel not only where the other person's balance lines are, how they're arranged, and where there's a weakness in them, but we start to sense it in ourselves. And then we'll start to learn, okay, maybe I can set myself up different so that I am not as vulnerable to being pushed over. And again, the only thing with this game is just to unbalance each other. And it can be a slow motion wrestling, muscle oriented, where we're pushing against each other and feel free to freeze up at any time and say, okay, where's yours, where's mine? Where can we unbalance each other? All right, friends. So that is our first video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you learned a little bit about the base yeah. that we have all the time. This is when we're walking, this is when you're running through the woods and you bump into something, when a wind's blowing against you and someone shoves you. There's all kinds of places where this comes into play besides just the grappling. Knowing where those balance lines are, where you are strong on that balance line, and where you're vulnerable. Share with us in the comments if you're trying any of this out and if you have any questions, ask and we will do our best to answer. All right, love to you all.